All right, welcome back. So in this episode, we're going to try to tackle a couple of different things. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, Flux and how we can integrate that to the design process. Um, ways to automate some things that used to take uh, maybe a week, maybe two weeks to do, are now kind of a 30-second point-and-click um, operation. So just keep everybody in the loop on that sort of thing. Um, first off, we're going to open up uh, Revit and create kind of a test fit for a school. We're going to use uh, Dynamo. We're going to use uh, Cal Martin's uh, space planning uh, script for that. Uh, really love 2017 and the ability to just run a script without having to really open up Dynamo um, and just be able to run it in the background. Uh, so what it's doing is it's grabbing uh, the, the school, if you will. Um, it's grabbing all the first grade, second grade, third grade rooms, the gym, uh, those those kind of things, and uh, they're already pre-programmed. Uh, to be a certain size, um, certain department, uh, certain adjacency next to another room, uh, those kind of things. So while this thing is uh, bringing up the Excel file, finding it for me, which is very nice, uh, there's a couple different ways we can do this. While that's running, uh, let's just go ahead and jump into Flux uh, and see what that looks like here. Let me minimize down my player. Uh, so Flux is, is a visual programming tool, if you will, uh, that's on the web, so you don't really need to download necessarily anything to make it operational. You just open up uh, Google Chrome um, and then just kind of go into it. So we're going to pick on uh, Site Extractor today. This is a pretty interesting thing. I wish I would have had this you know, a couple years back in college because, um, you know, back in the day, or even now, uh, it, you know, it takes a, a good week just to get all the contour information and, and those kind of things, which is available online you know, at OSM or any kind of data map type of database that's on the web. But what Flex does is it kind of gathers it for you and uh, basically you go into Google Maps and just point and click on the area that you want. So let's say we want to do a little test fit of a school, maybe somewhere down here in, in Overland Park, uh, Kansas, just to, just to get an idea of, of what, what it is, where it is, what it needs to look like. Um, so let's go ahead and create a new project. Let's call it prototype test fit two. And so it automatically created the file for me. And this is going to take, take just a minute, but it's going to gather all the road information, the contours, uh, 3D topograph model of, of this area, um, building footprints, those kind of things. Um, so we can go ahead and kind of visualize that uh, in another way. So this is moving pretty fast. Let's see here. Let's let's take a look at the contour lines. That's a lot of data um, that needs to get put into this, um, pretty much on, on every project, if you will. So I've gone ahead and got that information. Once again, I'm, I'm kind of interested in this area right down here. Maybe it, maybe it fits. Let's take a look at what roads are going on in that area. Let's also take a look at the building footprints that are going on in that area. Um, pretty pertinent information. Uh, to know what's going on uh, if we're going to locate a building and, and the things that are around that. So already right away I'm able to see what's going on at my site. Um, parks, any kind of water, water meaning uh, rivers, lakes, streams, not water lines. I believe electrical, water, sewer, I think those things are coming from flux. Uh, it's just a matter of, of getting those databases set from the different cities and municipalities. So, okay, so we've got our school made, uh, but it's, you know, it's going to take some time to organize um, the adjacencies for this. So we actually have an adjacency script that basically, um, we have a module essentially that'll say, um, hey, I want to organize it in this type of parameter in our module version 1.2.8 or something to that effect. So. What it essentially does is it creates that school for us. Let me minimize this. There, there's a couple of things that we can improve on. I personally can improve on. Um, so you start to see the yellow being the circulation, uh, where the corridors are, make sure they're the right widths, uh, those kind of things. So we just want to make sure that we're uh, getting closer and closer with each version. So we're kind of on version one, if you will, uh, that gets us pretty close to a school layout. Um, been playing with some interesting things. So if I have a gym and I have storage inside the gym underneath the bleachers, where does that go? So we've got a little uh, sports storage under here. 
trying to decide how to uh, best utilize that. Does that go on the inside or the outside of that gym? Since it is located technically inside the same uh, footprint as the gym. Uh, so just a lot of different interesting ideas uh, that go along with this. So we've, we've kind of got our school here. So we'll go ahead and fire up Dynamo because we want to be able to put all these uh, Lego pieces, if you will, up onto Flux and get that into our, our test site here. So once we get that going, we've got our prototype test fit too. Let's get our, our adjacency space planning script going. Bring that up, and then we'll just connect Flux into that and upload that information. So there's only there's only really a couple uh, small little things you need to know uh, with the Flux nodes. It's these four. Um, select your project list. So we'll do that real quick. Oops, hit the wrong button there. We have that prototype test fit. Um, I'll usually set it to constantly, uh, and then we'll need. I haven't run it yet, but um, we'll need to know what our information that we're sending out is. Um, so let's go ahead and hit run real quick on this so we can send that information somewhere else. So bring that into Dynamo, all nicely categorized, sorted uh, information, square footages, uh, basic general building layout, which is um, really kind of nice. Not color coded yet in Dynamo, but that's, that's okay. It's, it's not required for this uh, piece. Uh, we need to create a new sort of building Print test fit. Okay, should be able to send that information up. So we've got our flow control and flux, and we've got our send to flux. So you have to create a flux account if you didn't already figure that out. Um, and then they should be able to give you a 30 day demo to kind of test some of this information out. So um, that's really all it is. It's just selecting the right project and sending that data. In this case, we're sending this data up there to Flux. Um, let's see here. Oh, good. You did create it all. Uh, let's just take a quick gander here. And probably push this information. Yeah, it looks okay. So it looks like in 3D. Go ahead and move this over real quick just to see if it's working. And we should be able to push that information up. The flux, give me just two seconds, let that thing run. Taking a little bit longer than I thought, that's okay. Now we should have this data information. It's probably not in the right location. We'll give it just a second. So it's still loading. And there we go. We've got kind of an idea. I just barely made the edge of this um, I wanted to kind of put it right here, but that's that's fine. We can we can do that later in the in the live demo. But now I've got uh, basically a building footprint laid out on on the site. Uh, I can see approximately how large it is uh, according to this module that's been put in. So we have different modules for different types of gyms, different types of classrooms, different types of science rooms, different types of math rooms, different types of admin wings, so on and so forth. Um, that are quick to kind of change in and change out. Uh, so that's really it. We're going to go over this live uh, later this week. I uh, hope you will join us. See you then.